go down. Ah, good morning, Eric. Good evening. Welcome to today's webinar. I'm Kathy Madison with CIDM and Comtech. I'll be your moderator today. Uh, before I turn it over to our panel from um, CIDM, Comtech, and um, DCL and RWS, I just have a couple of announcements that I want to make. I think most of you know uh, who we are. Don will do a little bit of an intro as well. But I just wanted to let you know we do have some conferences coming up. Uh, we have our best practices conference, which is, as we like to say, the premier conference for information development managers in the industry. Uh, we have decided to move this to an online event where we'll have lots of uh, Zoom breakout sessions, lots of one-on-one -on -one sessions to learn from your peers. The theme of this year's conference is all about a seat at the table using the analogy of trying to get you a uh, uh, better chance to get to your executive's table, uh, making it more inviting for your team members to join your table, but also trying to you get your um, users involved at, at your table and also uh, getting a seat and being more productive with your product teams. So we'll have lots of great, like I said, interactive sessions on that. Uh, registration is still open and you can go to the bpinfomanagementcenter.com for that. We also have our European version of our big Comfex uh, conference. That's the uh, larger um, conference where we do have our vendors like RWS there and uh, DCL sometimes go. I don't believe they're able to attend this year. Uh, and that's where we have topics on both DITA and non-DITA and lots of different tracks. And like I said, the exhibitors will be there um, showing off their tools. The call for speakers is still open for that until the end of this month. And of course, if your talk is accepted, your registration fee is waived. And we are excited to go back to the same place we went to in Rotterdam a couple of years ago. And if you are involved in the DITA OT, uh, the folks there have agreed to do their event the day before our event, and that will be on the 13th of November. So that's a little bit about our conferences coming up. Uh, Comtech, uh, we do have some workshops coming up um, toward the end of September. Several of them are going on simultaneously. Obviously, we have different instructors teaching those. Uh, we've got minimalism, which is one of Don's uh, fortes and has been teaching that for quite some time. That class is on. And we have Editing Essential, a relatively new class that will be uh, taught by Dana. Aubin, and then Developing Content Strategy, Don will teach that one as well. And then our Brianna Stevens will be doing the DITA um, publishing workshop. So those are the workshops. And then we do have some lots of webinars coming on. There were too many uh, for me to add to the list here, but we encourage you to go to the CIDM website and click on upcoming webinars. And more importantly, you can find out about these things in advance if you subscribe to our mailing list, and then you'll just get emails about them and can link at that time or join us at that time. You could also use uh, LinkedIn, follow us on LinkedIn and follow us on Twitter. So that's enough announcements from me. I am going to turn it over to our, our panelists. But before I do, let me do some logistics. We are recording this session. And if you have questions for the panelists, please use the question dialog box. If you want to make general comments, feel free to use the chat. We'll monitor both and we'll take those questions at the end. Um, we should have plenty of time to uh, field those questions. So with that, uh, let me turn this, the screen over to Dawn. Okay, let me uh, get that set up. Oops, there we go. Yeah, but that's way back. Let's see, that's, uh, I, I gave you a big preview. Okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So hello, everybody. As you know, we are here to talk about the results um, of our digital transformation survey that we did earlier this year. It's It was actually done quite a bit earlier. It took us a while to get this webinar set up, but we have, have all of the data to talk about and um, Stip and, uh, and Mark and I are going to share um, at least the way we're interpreting the data, but um, certainly we welcome your chat and, and uh, questions and so forth of, uh, if you have any specific questions about how we, how we um, 
interpreted data. So um, just as a quick introduction, um, I am Dawn Stevens. If you have not met me before, I'm the president of ComTech, the director of CIDM. And uh, um, we've been doing all sorts of these types of surveys um, a lot with actually with Mark and, and DCL. We're happy to have RWS involved in this particular survey with us uh, this time. And I'll let um, each of them introduce themselves uh, before we continue. So Mark, you wanna go ahead and, and say hi? Uh, hi, I'm Mark Gross. I'm president of Data Conversion Laboratory. And uh, as Dawn said, we've been working on these uh, surveys for uh, 10 or 12 years. And welcome, uh, Chip, to, to, to the party uh, and, and uh, RWS. I think it's great. Uh, yeah, and uh, uh, we, do, we do conversion of documents, uh, so that, as our name implies, and work with all kinds of, do, uh, all kinds of uh, uh, document analytics and converting documents to data into other formats. And uh, uh, I think this has been a great survey this year and uh, looking forward to discussing it. Hi, Thank you, Don and, and Mark. It's uh, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. And I really appreciate being here today. And thanks to Contact and, and DCL for really driving this. Um, so I'm Chip Gettinger. I work with our customers who are adopting our content solutions at RWS. Uh, I really enjoy working with partners on solutions and customers, technical and business requirements. and also really enjoy seeing the insights from this uh, survey and appreciate the time that it took to put these slides together by this team. And so I uh, look forward, Don, to our further conversations. All right, well, great. Uh, I enjoy, have, have been, we've already talked through these data uh, together okay. and I've enjoyed talking to you all. And, and so um, hopefully we'll have some good insights here. So to start with, um, everybody always wants to know who was involved. And so I do have just this first slide to, to kind of put this in perspective of who, who contributed, uh, where were they coming from and, and so on. And so, yes, even though we are all worldwide com companies um, and we certainly promoted the survey to all of our different customers and so on, we still see you know, the vast majority of respondents did come from the US, but you also see that we have representation really from all over the world, from um, Asia and um, Europe and even Africa you see in there. So we, we, I think we didn't get any South American, but otherwise, you know, we've got representation from all the continents, um, but certainly um, vast majority is coming from the United States. So keep that in mind as we look at the data. And then um, in terms of industries, largely they're all, it's, it's all over the place. People were, um, you know, are, are representing all sorts of industries. You can see them here on the slides. The, the majority or the, the biggest part, not the majority by any means, but the, the biggest representation came out of people who classified themselves in, in the manufacturing area. However, um, really you see, uh, we got a good spread of different industries. In fact, so nice of a spread from the different industries that one of the things we wanted to, we, we were doing when we analyzed the data was to be able to say, was there any particular industry that is further along in their digital transformation or who um, have you know, particular um, uh, trends that, that might be um, something that everybody else could anticipate? And really because of how well diverse everybody was, we couldn't really say, oh yeah, this industry is doing much better uh, than another industry. So um, you know, if you have any questions about that, we can certainly try to, to answer some of those, but largely we can't really draw a lot of, of, um, of conclusions from that. But I think it's in a way very good because we got good representation to really see what's happening across the entire uh, technical communications spectrum and not, um, limited to a, a, a specific industry. So um, with that un understanding where the context comes from, the first thing that we really wanna to touch on here is this is the digital transformation survey and digital transformation is indeed a, um, a buzzword really, you know, and, and um, not just the technical communication industry, but really just kind of across companies as, as a whole, people are talking about, oh, we need to, to worry about digital transformation. And so um, as a buzzword, I think that means that a lot of people have different definitions of what exactly that term means. And so we've got here just a few um, little clips of um, what some of the uh, definitions were that we had people write in. Um, and you can see it really goes all over the place. We've got some very 
specific uh, definitions. I think maybe some people might have gone to the web and because I think we had some word for word <laughs> definitions of exactly what did it mean. Um, but um, so we had those types of things of just migrating people to uh, some kind of modern um, presentation of content using digital um, technologies to better our lives, that type of thing. Um, but I really liked a few of these things specifically of like the, the little purple ones, the easier life, right? Of like, oh, digital transformation is going to make, make life easier for us. We're going to move away from paper. Um, it's innovative. You know, so we had a lot of those types of, of, of discussions um, in there of just making it easier for the author. So we had that side of things. And then we also had the the flip side of it being easier for the users as well, finding better ways to deliver content to the users, what they need, what when they need it, um, and and making sure that they get a consistent experience and a consistent message and so on. So both sides of it, really, we saw that representation in um, in that definition. Yeah, Mark, I would say, you know, I thought it was interesting that it spanned between the very philosophical kind of things like easier life and, and some more, much more technical versions. But I, I would say that uh, uh, digital transformation has been going on for the last 30, 40, 50 years. And, and it almost a definition changes every time you time moves along. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, to, today it means uh, uh, it, it, it you know it, it means uh, reuse of content and multi-use and all those kind of things. Uh, Twenty years ago, digital transformations meant just being able to people using the internet and getting stuff out there. So, and uh, and, and I dare say, in, in a couple of years, it'll be much more focused on artificial intelligence and more yeah. automation and things like that. So I, I think it, it's it's a, it's a term that that's it's a buzzword, but it's it changes in time in terms of where we are in 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 our uh, you know where we are in in you know in, in, in the way life is. Mm -hmm. And what I see, um, Mark and Don, with the organizations I work with, the digital transformation is very focused on customer experience. And I love the quote here about modernizing content and. We all have suffered the, the downsides of bad, poor content on the internet and digital deliveries applications. And, and so I feel it's also a business transformation as well as digital. And we also look at, at more innovative ways of delivering content out. You know, we, we've all been working with chatbots and others, but we have voice activated systems. So digital transformation mean, even means more to me now of how do we precisely provide the content our customers, employees are looking for or, or don't even know that they should know and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I appreciate both of what you're saying, you know, the modernization and the digital technologies, absolutely, as, as technology continues to evolve, um, we should, this should be a constant thing. And I think we'll see some of that in some of the survey things of where are you? Is it, is it a one and done type of thing? Probably not, right? Because there's always something more modern and something new coming along. So, um, yeah. So anyway, I, you know, again, setting that, that expectation of it should be easier on everybody, whether you're writing it or whether you're using it, right? That, that we're hoping that digital transformation will make things um, easier. So we asked then, okay, with that definition, let's talk about what is happening here. And, and digital transformation, as I said, spans a lot of the industries, not just within our technical communication that we might focus on um, primarily in our own companies, but um, every different organization within a company um, oftentimes has some kind of an initiative. So we asked, you know, what, what's happening in, in your company, in your organization, um, in terms of digital transformation? And so it was really interesting to me to see that, you know, the, the largest group here says, yes, we do indeed have a corporate-wide initiative, that someone from up high is saying, digital transformation is important and everyone within the company should be looking at what they can do uh, to transform their part of the business. Um, so seeing that, um, that everybody has a corporate wide, I was glad to see that that's still yeah. seen, that, that is seen as a, as a corporate initiative. Um, we see, you know, again, this, a smaller percentage, but still that, well, it's, we're doing it, but everybody's kind of doing it on their own. Right. Um, so, um, at least they're working on it, right? And I think it was 
you know, good to see that of everybody who's responding, you know, there's only a few percentage that doesn't, that says, well, we don't have a strategy at all right now. So. What I found interesting, Don, it's great. I agree. I half of almost half the organizations have corporate wide initiatives. Another trend I'm seeing is when companies merge and acquisitions and, and more frequently now I'm seeing that they're, their transformation strategies are converging as well, instead of keeping the separate business units. And again, it's back to that customer experience that expect that consistency. Um, we may have individual products, but the customer sees an overall solution. So it's great to see organizations seeing that. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Right. I think part of uh, when companies merge, part of what they're looking for in, in terms of uh, uh, of, of, of the benefit is that they can, they can hook on to whoever has the better initiatives already in place. That's, uh, so that's, uh, you know, so I, I think that's, that's a big piece of what happens. And I, I suspect even the ones where people are saying each business has its own initiatives, they're, they're, uh, they, they still may be, I think that corporate wide initiative might be a larger number because, uh, uh, even when people are thinking in terms of their own initiatives, it's probably under a broader umbrella in many cases. So mm -hmm. I think there's a big trend in that direction, just from what I've, I've been seeing. Yeah, absolutely. And I would agree that what you alluded to earlier of just each business unit having its own initiative, they might, or they might be learning from, you know, which one has the best in a merge situation. You know, I think it's the same thing as that oftentimes maybe it starts as each business unit exploring what can we do from a digital transformation. And then as, mm. as different organizations are learning and, and publicizing that out to the rest of the company, then it starts to merge together into a, a, right. uh, a, co a comprehensive initiative for the whole corporation. Right. But over 90% have initiatives, which is a lot mm -hmm. more than when we looked at it before COVID. Right, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. exactly, yeah, before working on it, for sure. So then um, I want you to remember this 47% number because one of the things that actually worked um, remarkably well in terms of consistency within data, and I'm always looking at the consistency in data, is we ask who's involved in the transformation. And so you see the same number, 47, 47, 47, in, in some of these other different types of groups that, that we um, had asked about. So um, they kind of match. Yeah, if it's a corporate-wide initiative, yeah, everybody's involved. We see a higher number in tech pubs because, of course, our, our um, uh, survey really went majority to people who were in the, in some kind of um, communication area, so we would expect that to be a little bit high. That they you know maybe there isn't a corporate initiative, but they have their own um, training a little low. The lower I think that might just be reflective of all organizations don't have training departments, right? So otherwise, I would expect to maybe see that forty seven percent. But it was really consistent of you know if we have a corporate wide initiative, we're saying yep, everybody is in, indeed involved. It is truly a good corporate wide initiative. And what I love uh, too, Don, that we talked um, last time was about the governance that goes into supporting this. And kudos to organizations that and and on innovators on this on our webinar that think about governance across these systems because obviously there, there's silos in organizations. But how do we get that consistency? And digital transformation help provide the infrastructure still let marketing do some things perhaps very differently than others, but there's a consistency that customers pick up on that, that really do benefit the, the value. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we also then asked, okay, you're doing it, right? We see that most of them have a transformation. So then basically we're asking why, what's, what's driving this overall transformation, especially again, more from that publication side of things. And so we see here, um, uh, I, I think not necessarily surprising information that, you know, uh, the majority here is, is that, well, we want to have multiple outputs. We maybe still are, are delivering in print, which we'll see in a later thing. We're delivering in HTML, we're delivering in, uh, in product help and so forth. And so part of that digital transformation is to help support that. Um, we, ex the, we saw in the definition that there's a lot of expectation for um, automation. And so that kind of ties into the delivery time that there's an expectation of, hey, we're gonna get faster if we have some digital transformation that we are able to incorporate some automation. Um, and then there's just the reality of, you know, well, it's it's time to make a change and we might as well, you know, change to tools that are gonna help us with digital transformation because we have some aging systems and we know we're gonna, we need to just keep up with the times. Um, 
And then a couple of smaller things, the translation um, costs, again, kind of related to, to even delivery time, that expectation that maybe by uh, having some of these new technologies, we'll, we'll be able to take advantage of reuse and things like that, that will drive our translation costs down some. And then uh, what you were talking about earlier, Chip, of just, you know, when companies are merging together is that, okay, we need to all figure out how to uh, work together better, um, and that that is being that's driving the, the transformation. So, Mark, yeah, I, I know you had mentioned that you thought. Yeah, there, there were a few things that were, that were that were a little surprised to me, but then I realized that it's really uh, it's the audience. It's first of all, I, I I would have thought translation costs would have been a bigger factor, but I, I realized, you know, while we think of us everybody as being international companies. Not that many companies really translate and produce materials in, in lots of languages. So I think that's why it's it's not really uh, a, a big issue yet, especially since um, we said most of our most of our audience was U.S. based, and uh, and U.S. itself is such a big market that people that you know, people sort of think it's sort of English centric at least today. I think that's going to change over time because. Uh, the, the 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 world is shifting very quickly. We talked about digital transformation earlier, and it changes over time. I mean, I think things are moving around certainly in economies and stuff. So there's some global things going on over here. But I think I mean the two big things are multiple outputs and delivery time, and they're related. I, I mean, delivery time. I mean, you know, in every area we're talking about, products develop so much more quickly. That you know, you just can't say, well, it'll be eleven months before we deliver documentation. It's it's <laughs> like I got to have it this week, or the product can't ship, right? So, uh, so I think delivery time has been a, a big impetus in all this, and uh, and multiple output is just part of that because the way you deliver it is you deliver it on people's phones and you deliver it on on on, on tablets, and and yes, you send out PDF documents, and occasionally there's some print as we'll see later. But, but that's really been, I think, the impetus. Um, and aging systems, I mean, more and more systems are, are, are timing out. It's not just that our system is old, but uh, <laughs> maintenance shuts down next year. We got to do something. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so there's uh, all those things is a, a sub, sub story, I think, to each one of those. Mm -hmm. I like the dinosaur uh, picture. <laughs> <laughs> we, I think we talked in our in our pre-call that we could have just put our three pictures there instead. But I, <laughs> 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 all right. Um, so, what's driving it? Well, how important is it then? And so we asked just that question: Is it the number one priority, or how you know how important would you would you say? And this is again um, really reflective of the fact that you know most people are working on it. Is that it's either the number one or at least so important. It's not maybe not the number one, but it is very very important. So we see between um, everybody who answered, you know, more than three quarters of the people said it's a, it's absolutely an important priority, and and a third of them are saying it is the number one priority. So this is a a critical thing for people um, that they're, they're trying to figure it out, we're trying to work on it and, and make this a reality. Um, we did have some interesting comments of that, that, that people said, well, it does depend a little bit on the business unit in which you live as well, that um, many of the tech com uh, oriented people did say it's really important to us, uh, but maybe not as much to some of the rest of the organization. Right. So. Or, or a variation on that is, well, sales is number one, but this is really pretty close after that. I mean, it depends on your orientation. I mean, exactly. <laughs> the goal of the business is number one, but this is the most important support area. So mm -hmm. I think that you know, the, the two together really tell the story. It's, 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 it's important across the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a, a common thread I like is driving, uh, aligning with business goals in your organization. So one group, you know, customer support may be able to drive it and then it could be adopted, but it, aligning with business goals really do help get executive buy-in on these initiatives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so we know how important it is. We know what's driving it. So then we said, okay, so now where are you? And uh, this is, you know, probably the, the most revealing when we really take a look at this of just everybody's kind of figuring it out, right? And we gave some choices here of implementing and planning and refining and completed. You see um, only a very brave few 7% said, yeah, we're done, right? 
<laughs> everybody else is is somewhere in that implementing or planning or refining or uh, you know, a lot of comments about all of them right that we're 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 in so we're, we're implementing some pieces we're planning some pieces we're finding some pieces we're going back and forth between all of them um and so really we see um pretty much the everybody who said yeah it's important to us and and we're doing something is really still in the process of of doing something planning it implementing it refining it um you know i think that it's key here that we see only three and a half percent have said we haven't started right <laughs> so I, I think it's remarkable that seven percent seven and a half percent said they're completed because this is uh <laughs> yeah I, it's i don't see i i think we're never done <laughs> so I think even here, uh, it depends on where people are in, in the in the and and it, it cycles. You, you're done, and then new technology comes along, and new concepts come along. So it's uh, but it's it's uh, very few are not involved. I mean, this is this is again, I think, a big change from where we were before COVID, before the Stone Ages, <laughs> and. As a vendor in CCMS, I think this reflects the amount of business we're seeing as far as, as RFPs, RFIs, people looking for implementing and planning. We're also seeing a number of second generation projects where people are remodeling their content. They're re, you know, they have originally moved to Dita or something years ago, and now they're taking advantage of things like taxonomies, Don. We've talked about that. So it's exciting to see, you know, what roughly two thirds, three quarters are implementing and planning um, and refining. So this is really exciting. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, I think Mark, you has pointed out too that part of the um, am I implementing, am I planning? It kind of depends on where's the, what do we mean by you, the person answering the question or the whole company? Because in larger companies, potentially they're implementing in one area and planning in another area. And that's right, right. And, and I think also, I think Chip's point is very good. I mean, it's like you've implemented, but uh, now well, content reuse is pretty important. Let's do content reuse, let's do a taxonomy, let's handle a new, uh, you know tag it better so that you use artificial intelligence you constantly yep. uh, uh, upgrade upgrading your uh, your, uh, your your content and, and what you're working with and uh, to chip's point i mean uh, uh you know second I, we're, we're in places where we're like on the third and fourth revision mm -hmm. over the last 20 years so things are constantly changing and content is a uh, in 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 many organizations, content is a major asset that constantly needs to be uh, improved. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, so, so I just, some some like products may only have a two or three year lifetime, but others can have a 20, 30 or 40 year lifetime. Or the the B fifty two bomber is on its uh, had its sixtieth birthday five years ago. So, huh. so <laughs> it, it's not the same, right? Everything has changed on it, but that's a very long lifetime. Yeah. So, uh I mean, good point. What you're, what you're working with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, excellent point. All right, so now this next question or slide really covers a couple of questions in a way. It's the it's the answers to one specific question of committed transformation resources. Now we also asked in the survey, and we don't have a separate slide about it, of what what have you done to prepare? So there was that kind of I've prepared or I've committed. And there is a bit of a distinction here is that I'm showing you the committed ones. So these are the ones where people have actually said, yep, we have committed time, budget, staff, et cetera, to these various, you know, you know how many percentage of it have committed these things. The preparation question, which kind of paralleled this, had the, you know, which have you done to prepare? Well, they might have selected, for example, the, the contract. They might have selected outside consultants. In fact, 52% um, said we've selected them, but only 37% has said we've actually committed to them yet, right? So there's still maybe some funding things that have to happen or those types of things. But they, they nevertheless basically um, paralleled uh, this committed piece, uh, just maybe the preparation was a little bit higher of, yeah, we've already figured out what the tool is, we haven't committed yet, we we know what our budget needs to be, we haven't committed yet, et cetera. So this is the the what we thought we would show then is that in terms of actual then we're implementing, we are you know, getting going, what kinds of resources have been committed? And here I want to really talk a little bit about, you know, might be really good from um, uh, Chip's perspective of you know tools and technology always is a foremost on people's minds. So 74% have said we have committed 
um, some tools and technology. We've selected those tools. We've got, we're, we're maybe starting the implementation process of those, or maybe they're already um, implemented and doing uh, refinement in it, but there's that focus on, um, on tools. And that's often the case, you know, I think in any kind of um, transformation is that the focus goes to um, tools, and then we'll figure out what staff is needed and how much time we need and how much training we need. Um, you know, so from my side, not a tool vendor, I'm like, mm, I would love to see some of these other numbers a little bit higher on there. Yeah. But, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Don, I, I think the trend I'm seeing is with tools and technology, people are, or organizations come with budgets already in mind. And and kudos to you and your organization, you, you've helping organizations understand the investments, the budget they need to budget have versus 10 years ago where, where it was a lot of guesswork. Uh, I, I too am concerned a little bit about the, the lower point of education. I think uh, technology and tools need education to be successful in deployment. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I would say if I look at something like, you know, the other side of it, of what we've been doing to prepare, we didn't even ask about education. So I don't know if they're, you know, maybe mm. it's, it's so that that was maybe a, a flaw in the survey. It was going to say, well, are you already pre-educating, um, you know, in the preparation time? But um, but still, yeah, it's it is that big gap there, forty percent gap here of uh, between education and tools in terms of what they've committed. You know, a lot of still maybe um, things to come. Of we need to commit some more time to learn, um, more time to implement, more time, more staff to do things. You know, is really what we've seen a gap here. Like the tool by itself isn't gonna isn't gonna cut it by itself. You know. Right, it's, it's in people's consciousness that oh, I got to get the tool, but I think uh, just point is very important. I mean, education is a key thing. I, and I always say that in implementation, the, the technical the technical issues are resolvable, but uh, the change management and getting people uh, in place to to be able to work with it and not fear it is is is, is really where the big problem is. So. Um, I don't think enough education is being done. I'll just say, prescriptive, pres prescriptively, we should be doing more education, but that's not what's showing up in actually the way people think about it. So I think mm -hmm. that that's just some place where we need to do some ev evangelization. Yeah, yeah, and I think you used a key a key word there is change management, mm -hmm. and you know one of the things that is part of the um, the CIDM's um, process maturity. Um, evaluation is change management of like how well do you plan for and manage change and I think a lot of that is represented here of part of change management is is you know preparing your staff and getting the budget and, and setting aside time and you know all these things that we see is a little bit lower percentage and so really that that change management process to really have success in any kind of any kind of strategy but certainly digital transformation um, you know maybe people need to to be looking more at some of their change management mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. All right, so we also then we asked, okay, you, you've committed these things, um, but yet even if even if you're not yet fully in, um, in the, th the throes of digital transformation, we know from experience from the documentation side, technical communication sides that there are certainly transformation strategies that can be done even if there isn't yet in place all of the staff or the the even the tool or things like that there are still things that you can be doing with your content to be preparing for uh for chatbots or you know uh voice assistants or you know any of the things that you were mentioning earlier chip and so we asked some questions of are you doing these things right now are they part of your transformation or even those of you who aren't doing transformation are you doing these and i thought this was really an encouraging um set of, of data here to see that there's a lot of focus the majority of people you know, slight majorities in some cases are really looking at how are we you know at our content strategy side of things are we how are we doing um our information modeling what do we currently have do we need it should it be re refactored in any way are we being redundant um how moving to structured content uh towards that ability for reuse and then even the taxonomy management is really high really a focus of looking at how can how do people find information? How are we categorizing that information? Um, what can we do to to make things more accessible? So all of those numbers, you know, really encouraging to I think as part of the transformation strategies. The the bottom side, the the one that really um, I guess would 
um, surprise me and um, concern me um, when we talk about change management and just this whole idea of new change, we go back to that definition of digital transformation. And so many people put into their definition of digital transformation that we're going to improve the customer experience, right? That we're going to make sure that the customers get what they need, when they need it, and so forth. And yet we see this much smaller percentage of people saying, oh yeah, we're talking to our users. We're conducting user studies. We're looking at what do they really want from a digital transformation so that we understand how we want to deliver it, what content needs to be delivered and in what format and, and all those types of things. Really the way you get that information is talking to your users. So I found this, this number a little disappointing. I'm amazed, Don, too, because I, I, you look at the 60% for taxonomy management, it's really exciting because that can help you align across multiple organizations and in a company. But isn't user studies, user usability a big part of how you build out and, and use your taxonomy? So, yeah, it's interesting. We'll see how that evolves over, over the next few years. Yeah. It's a, you know, kind of an age old question that I mean, I encounter all the time, like when I teach minimalism or something like that, which is also a big emphasis on users. And so we talk about, you know, how, what are you doing? Are you talking to your users? How do you, how do you get feedback? And, and it's this, like I said, I, I find it an age old question of many times the technical documentation group um, says, well, we're not allowed to talk to users, you know, so that might be reflected yeah. here is that we don't have that access that um, either there's a, maybe there's a user, um, group of some kind, you know, some kind of a user interface group or user study group or something that's separate from them that does the studies and maybe they're getting that data. Maybe the salespeople are talking, talking to them, but they don't let you, you know, we don't want you to mess up our relationship. I mean, I've heard this, these stories as one telling you, you know, that, oh, well, we don't want them to mess up the, the relationship we have with, with um, our, our uh, customers. Um, you know, so they own the relationship, the sales team or marketing team owns the relationship, that type of thing. So um, there's definitely a, um, it goes back to the conference that, that uh, Kathy was talking about, the seat at the table type of thing of how do we get um, our, our users at our table, right, is, is, is a, a question that really um, has become more and more important. And, and I think this might reflect just the fact that we're, we're not allowed to yet or, you know, that type of thing. Right, or yeah, it's, or you're not allowed to, or it's really being done, or you don't really have that, uh, you don't have the access to the users that other people have. So, but you said uh, the salespeople, like, I mean, it doesn't mean that there's no feedback coming, but another hand, so I, there might be more feedback coming, we're saying here. On the other hand, if uh, there's, there's also that uh, the tendency to think of yourself as the expert, why do I need to <laughs> ask those questions? I, <laughs> what, what are they now? But uh, you're right. I mean, it's, I think it's, it, it goes along with some of the other things we said. That it needs some, needs some evan evangelization on we got to get more feedback from, from the users. Uh, but, but most of these are, you know, the, the things are most like technical kind of analysis kind of things, right? Those are the ones that have the really high numbers. And that may be what people are thinking. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, absolutely. Especially if you're a technologist. <laughs> Okay, so now we have the first of two um, kind of uh, eye charts that um, I'm going to take a little bit of time to really explain what you're seeing here. But we had we asked a lot of data in there in our surveys, and uh, believe me, we played with a lot of different ways to present this information. So what I want you to take a look at this is we asked what what are what format is your content in. And then we ask questions about, well, what percentage of your content is in each of these formats? So before we worry about the different colors, I just want you to look at the relative um, curve of this and, and where things are. They're ordered in, in terms of, of most people saying that they had content of, at some amount in these particular things. So what we see here at the top end is, is that uh, pretty much everybody, this, this actually represents a, a vertical bar, but that's 85% of everybody responded to the to this survey said we have at least some content in the Microsoft Office suite, right? Um, so that is still the number one thing of, yeah, we have content there in, in Word, really, or Excel or PowerPoint or something like that. Um, and then it goes down from there with a, the fewest number of people saying we have some, some content in S1000D, right? So of all these different things, you can see a variety of different products that we asked about. Um, so you get that idea. It's good that we see HTML is pretty high compared to Office and even Ditta is pretty high there. So those mm -hmm. first 
you know, four or five here are, you know, really the indicative of what are most people using. And then we start to get down into um, smaller numbers by the time we, you know, we hit mark markdown, that's about a 50% um, people saying that they had some content in markdown. Um, so just look at that trend to just see, yeah, we, you know, the most popular products just in general. Now the color bars in these are saying, well, how much of our content is in there? So um, it's still a little <laughs> um, surprising to me, maybe concerning to me, but that um, that blue box, which is 100% of our content is in this particular format. Um, you can see that size of that box in, in, in Office. Now, Remember that doesn't is that's not exclusive to everything else. So it could be an office and it could be an HTML. Um, it, you know that that 100 of our content we've duplicated in multiple formats. So um, so do keep that in mind as well. But 100 of content still in office. Like why are we maintaining that? Kind of surprises me. But again, lots of different uh, industries and a lot of the different types of content that were covered here. So um, it probably does make sense for for some. Uh, but we see that the biggest blue bar. Um, our blue percentage there is is HTML. So that kind of reflects our digital transformation side of things. We're getting things onto websites, right? And they're not um, they're not um, just being printed or things like that. We're putting it into HTML so people can access it, it that way. Um, you know, the biggest uh, green bar in Creative Suite, that means, you know, less than 25% of our content is in there. That makes sense. What's in Creative Suite? That's the, you know, that's, that's your... Um, uh, pay a Photoshop or um, uh, that type of thing, um, potentially. So you've got a lot of that where a portion of our content, you know, our images and so forth would be, be being developed there, but certainly not all of the content. Um, I was surprised by video. And that video is number four here in terms of just overall popularity that a lot of people have it. Certainly it has that high green bar of like, yeah, no, most of our content is not here, but we do have some content in video. And Mark knows um, certainly from our previous surveys year over year, there's always been this, we think we're gonna, we, you know, we know we need to do more video, we're going to do more video. And so this is potentially reflective of people are actually um, are doing that now, getting some of the yeah. content into video. Yeah. I think this is a lot more than we've had in the past. I think uh, uh, the question is a little bit different, but this is a this is significant. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, absolutely. And then data is also an interesting one in terms of just kind of its its proportions. If you know, since we we all are very interested in the data side of things, is that you know if you're in data, um, you're pretty much committed to it, right? That you know, more than half of the people who said they're in data have more than half their content in it, right? So they, it is something that if that's the cho choice you've made, we're, we're um, doing a, a lot of, of um, data content there. And even if you looked at did, you know, structured authoring, if you think about that of like, well, we have data and we have XML that's not, not did and we have FrameMaker that's structured and we have S1000D and we have DocBook in there and we scheme in there, right? So there's a lot of just XML based things that whether it's data or some other XML um, a structured content, we see a lot of representation for structured content. Um, any, any other comments from you guys on that? I, I, I'm, I'm just amazed that, uh, that SGML and S1000D are both still very significant in what we were looking at. SGML, because there's still so much of it out there. And I think that's a legacy from what I was saying before, right. just, especially in, uh, I guess, in, uh, in the defense world and stuff that's still out there. That was the, the that preceded most well, of this other stuff. And then S1000D is such a large proportion has become such a large proportion uh, uh, and, and it makes sense because I mean, we're doing several large projects now in S1000D where five years ago, it was very rare for people to actually be doing lots of stuff. So uh, I, I'm a little surprised at that. And <laughs> an office is overwhelming, which is uh, not a surprise, but, uh, but it's, uh, but, you know, it, it's it's the hundred percent number is, is sort of I, I don't um, I mean it's, it's people are using Office for something. I'm not surprised at though. It really is such an overwhelming presence. I think this represents the challenges many of us have in digital adoption. You know, in digital strategies because you have so many sources of content. You know, and and anyways, it it's it's worthy of a deeper conversation. If you've got if you have to support multiple formats for your customer experience, how do you get that consistency? So, it, it does. It has some challenges. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
um, which is really why we asked the question is just to understand what yeah from that digital transformation where are we at and just for everybody's reference that in those end ones sgml s1000 d those represent about 34 percent of, of respondents said they had some content in uh you know at some level in the in those things so it is a, a pretty significant heavy yeah. percentage yeah exactly all right, so we asked that this was the tools of basically your authoring tool. What are you really working in? And then we also asked about storage, right? Which is, um, you know, how are we managing that content um, with the expectation of, you know, I, I would expect going into it that that we would have some kind of central repository where all this information is being being stored and so on. What we see is uh, sort of that, right? We have. 47% um, roughly either in a content, a component content management system or a content management system, one or the other, but that there is some kind of central place where our content is being stored um, in a, a management system. And then we have, you know, the file systems um, at, at a smaller percentage of, um, of, of use. Fortunately, I was really happy with just the 2% where they said we're, we're storing our, our files on our personal computer, right? So <laughs> we're, beyond, we're beyond that, but that we do have, you know, most people are saying, you know, we've got a lot of content, we need a way to manage it. And so we're gonna have a, a formal content management or component content management system you know, in use. But what I will say is that um, we asked the question primary right, so that we could divide this out by 100 and show kind of the piece of the pie. So we insisted on telling you telling us what the primary way was. And what we ended up with was an awful lot of write-ins saying um, it was hard to choose a primary, <laughs> that we manage our content in a variety of different ways. So even though I wanna, I wanna interpret this data as saying, oh, look, everybody's got centralized uh, sets of content. We had an awful lot of write-ins saying, well, yeah, we have a component content management system, but not everything's in there, right? We we still have some files elsewhere. And, and Don, this is reflected in RWS's business. We're seeing a lot of system integration across systems now required. So it's not unusual for us to have to integrate with a dam or integrate with uh, Git or other systems. It, it's very common today. In fact, we've come up with a, a connector um, framework to be able to handle that. So it, it's it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I've had definitely the clients who have said, you know, our content's all over the place. Can you help us just get it collected into a single place? And, you know, as, as part of the overall setting the stage, you know, for a digital transformation as well, we need to know what all our assets are that need to be transformed. And we don't, we because they're all over the place, right? So, yeah. Um, you know, I think it's uh, certainly another one of those things, just like you were talking about on the previous slide of here's all our source formats, which may indeed actually impact where you're storing your content, of course, right? Mark, markdown might oftentimes be in Git or, you know, that type of thing. Data might be in a CCMS, et cetera. Um, that it just goes going hand in hand of here's our challenge from a digital transformation perspective. Right. But I think it's encouraging that not many people are in the CCMS already. So it is, it is. It's a much higher number than I would have predicted before this uh, survey. All right, so both of these last two slides had to do with tools. So then we had to ask the inevitable question, which was, all right, are you, are you planning on changing? <laughs> so here, are the, here are the tools you said you were using. Do you plan to change them? And um, you can see, uh, you know, a majority here, a, a slight majority. So there is a third of the people saying, no, we got our tools, we're good, right? But we have more than 50% saying, yep, we intend to change them. <laughs> uh, we didn't ask when, we didn't ask what kind, you know, all of those, we just were like, curious to say, are you planning on changing your authoring tool or your content man storage management? Um, and actually, this was in the next year. The, the question was actually, do you plan to change tools in the next year? And so people are actively trying to find the, the right tools, like we were talking about you know, earlier with just the committed resources to tools and things like that. Is that right. this, is, this is where we start, right? All right. Did you, did you, the question was, do you plan to change in the next year? I changes this from being just aspirational. It means there is some uh, actual <laughs> continual flow of things going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, a lot of um, a lot of uh, 
potential uh, work for you, Mark, to help convert mm -hmm. that content to a new tool? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah change is a, is a good thing in many ways. And, and, and uh, well, in general, I mean, I think things do change and, and the technology has changed. And, uh, but it, it does take it, it does take time. Even though the next year, it's usually not in the next year. It could take several years. These are, these are getting these systems are getting to be more and more complex and need more planning and more analysis and uh, and more consulting done. <laughs> so. Uh, all right, so that is all about our authoring. So then our second big eye candy chart here is um, about, well, how are you delivering it? So we know now you've got all these different formats that you are writing in. How are you delivering it? Um, again, with those same kinds of percentages. So we, we're looking at um, this number close to the other one. This is 78%. So 78% of everybody responded said, yes, we are still printing something some amount of our content, we are delivering in print. Um, and then it goes down from here. Voice enabled is, uh, let me check that number, um, 30, surprisingly 36%. So mm -hmm. down here with still a pretty high percentage of some of the newer things, the voice enabled and the um, VR and AR types of things are still representative of, of more than a third of the people said, yeah, we got something in, in it. And in fact, even here, like voice enabled, that's a small green amount. They've got at least 25 to, to 50, or even it looks like the majority of them are saying 50 to 75% of our content is delivered as voice enabled in some manner. Um, so that's, you know, of those 30, you know, 50% of those 30%, you know, or 36%. But um, anyway, um, the other thing I wanted to, to point out that I thought was really surprising again is this video line, right? It's so print is the number one video was said 76% of the of people said said we are delivering in video and at some in some manner. This blue line is seven percent. Seven percent of the respondents said all of our content is represented in video, you know, as well as potentially other other formats, but they, you know, anything that people need is they can get in video which I thought was, was quite surprising. Yeah. And it was a higher than things like in-product help in a web portal. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So. yeah. What, what's exciting to me, Don, is you think about um, video. Um, earlier, we talked about aligning with business initiatives in your company for digital strategy. And you think mobile apps and, and web portals and videos are similar kind of deliveries. And we think about the principles of single sourcing content. Perhaps we're seeing now... We can we can deliver out to multiple channels. So it, it's it's great for me to see mobile apps to be so high because that to me is a big business driver in, in a lot of organizations. And digital strategy we know can help make it succeed or fail. Um, but yeah, it, it's 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 great to see the videos too. That that that's kind of a nice surprise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we see the rise of chatbots there. Of you know, it's about fifth from the end there, but chatbots. 46% of the people said they've got some content in chatbots. Yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah. I wonder if the high number for voice enable has to do with the, the, the movement towards accessibility mm. being able to deliver content in that way. I, I mean, and, and it's, an automa you know, it's part of that uh, multi uh, uh, ability to deliver multiple formats. I mean, voice enabled uh, will often mean that your text is being, is, is being converted into something voice enabled, that's that technology. Is is uh, is being used over there? So I I, I wonder if that's that that might be a big driver over there. Mm -hmm. um, not sure what it means that QR code is such a. I mean, I guess it means that, you, that they'll make it available if you show a QR code. But that's really a that really mixes in with other areas, right? I mean. All oh, right. What do you see? What ways. do you? Yeah. When you deliver on a QR code, what are you doing? Are you just calling up a PDF? You, deliver, you could be yeah. delivering video. You could be delivering print. You could be delivering right. in product help. All those things. I, so. I, I saw a cool QR application for a customer of ours. It was the and it brought up the installation guide for that particular product when you were in and because there were several components and they were able to have a QR code in each of the different pieces, and mm -hmm. it was and it worked with a with an iPad. It was really kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Uh, we did look at this because I did say you could answer more than one of these, um, you know, 
as a hundred percent because maybe your content is in multiple formats. You're, you're doing multi-channel publishing and everything. And so we did look at that um, and we did see that about a quarter of the people who were answering hundred percent in things answered hundred percent in at least three formats. So, you know, so they're, so they're, deli so that multi-channel publishing is actually a, um, an important aspect of, of the digital transformation and so on is that they're, you know, yeah, we're delivering our, all of our content that users need in a variety of formats to give them what they need in the, in the, in a format that they like, right. And that they'll use. So I thought that was interesting. All right, let's get off of this one and look at another busy thing, but a little bit more easy to understand. So this represents a couple of questions as well. We had asked, we asked several questions about um, what do you know about your users? So what are users asking for? And that's gonna be represented here in the blue, uh, the blue people column. This is what, what people said, our customers are asking for this type of deliverable. And then the green, the little spaceship here is represents the future. So we said, what, which of these do you plan to support in the next year? So what I'm doing here is we're comparing your user request versus what we are planning on providing. You know, so are we really in line with what our users are expecting? And this is interesting to me, and I, I think it takes a lot of inter interpretation. So largely in the first column, um, at least up until the community line, we see a, a pretty close match. Our customers are asking for it, we're giving it to them. Right, you know, um, one percent difference here, or three percent difference there. Um, Large, they're not, uh, you know, with the the number of people in the survey and everything else, margin of error. I think, you know, that those all are pretty well represented. Re well represented that, yep, we're doing what our customers are asking. Excellent. Then it's interesting on the right hand side, and to a certain extent, the community on the bottom here, where we've got a much lower percentage of people saying our customers are asking for this, compared to, but we are still giving it to them. Yeah. Okay, only 26% of the people have said we we need ebooks and 50% of the people said we're going to provide them. Yeah. Um and so we see that kind of big disconnect here um you know even down in some of the um newer technologies the voice enabled right that 34% is what we saw earlier um that yeah that's that many people are trying to do voice but only 14% of the people said that customers are asking for it. Now does that mean we're doing too much work, right? Are we doing more than our customers are asking? Or is this a, if you build it, they will come <laughs> kind of, um, you know, situation or uh, what? Yeah, go ahead, Mark. I know you have some thoughts. Well, voice may be an exception because like I said, if it's driven by accessibility, it may be that you're producing it for a much smaller percentage of population, but you have to do it uh, sure. as, as a public service or as a legal service. But I think uh, it, it, that is more effective, like in eBooks, like people are producing eBooks, but maybe people don't really care that much about that. Maybe it's these other formats like mobile apps and web is really what they're looking for. What I'm saying, the eBook is a convenient way to put it out there. We think people will want it. Uh, social media also, I, I mean, uh, there's a big industry push to let's get everything out on social media, but. Maybe people aren't that involved in, as, as, as in social media as, as the hype would suggest. So I think there, I, I think we may be doing too much work. Um, Chatbot, like I said, needs, uh, it, needs, uh, it, 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 it needs an advertising. Chatbots uh, are just not that good today. Yeah. So, so, you know, I would love a good chatbot, but I don't believe they are. So... You, you'll produce it, but I'm, I'm not really looking, I, I haven't found that useful, but if they do become useful and AI gets better and you and you have more of your content on it, that'd be great at, at midnight and I'm trying to get information, a chatbot would be terrific. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a really good point on the chatbot part is that, you know, they initially they were not all that great. And so, um, so that potentially explains that, yeah, customers are asking for them because, because they've had some previous experience, whether it was with your chatbot or somebody else's, but they have this thing of like, yeah, chatbots aren't really what I want. And, and so it, it takes this persistence. It's actually probably a good number to see that still we're, we're working on it because eventually, as, as you say, as AI improves, as we just improve mm -hmm. the way we do that, then, then that reputation will flip. Right, and people will want to to have it, and so the fact that we're 
one influencing that that decision in the first place, but then two were prepped for it when that when that thing does flip, right? That that okay, now all of our customers are asking for it and we weren't working on it, right? So there's there's definitely you know a balance that we have to find between well, our customers aren't asking for it yet, right? And if we wait till they do ask for it, is it going to take us two or three years before we're able to do it, or have we already been working on it in the in the process so we're ready for it to go? Yeah. I think the best chatbot app I've seen so far is a customer of ours that really invested in a really quality taxonomy and minimalization and all the things, Don, that you and your organization have taught for years. The cool thing was they built middleware that also was able to track what their customers were doing, you know, the cookies and so forth. So that married in with the chatbot. And, and then finally, it allowed the user to kind of ask a couple quick questions before the chatbot provided an answer. And, and these are all things that could happen in seconds and, and market, yeah, really reduce that frustration level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, I would, I, I guess I would, from this thing, I would say probably these numbers are, at first I'd look at them and go, oh, we're doing more work than we need to. And yet on the other side, like I said, I think we need to be prepped for it and so forth. So it's probably good to see these, these numbers of people who are working on things that are, uh, maybe not yet in demand because they'll, they'll that's going to be influenced in the future, I think. So, um, all right. So now we have um, just a couple of slides left that uh, we dug into the very specific um, areas. The first being the web portal. Um, we've heard so many different uh, approaches to delivering, delivering information on the web um, that, well, we've got proprietary information. We want to, we want to, not we need to protect it in some way versus the philosophy of oh it should it's part of the sales process it needs to be available um, and so we were kind of curious to see okay those of you who are publishing to the web how are you doing it is it um is it open to the public is it um behind a firewall and then the second question is 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 it basically customizable is it dynamic is it responsive to to user um, configurations, that type of thing, or is it just a static site that people can go to? And this was, um, I don't know, I mean, it, it explains the fact that I've just heard so many people say, I'm doing it this way or I'm doing it that way, because look at how even this is um, between the four main options of it's, it's open to the public and it's static, it's open to the public, it's dynamic, it's behind a firewall, you know, static and dynamic. Those numbers are so close to each other um of just yeah people are all doing different different things right <laughs> i'm amazed how many people still hide things behind the firewall we you know many companies see the 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 portals as sales opportunities for people to do research and we've we've all heard that on other webinars that people like to research technical information and if it's well written and well organized and you know it, it can be it can be a source of, of great information for for people looking to buy products yeah i you know but i think i actually wish we had some of this data uh, uh, earlier as well because i my instinct and my experience with the with my customers and everything is telling me that this number is decreasing chip the one behind the firewall cool. thanks so don Good to see actually to know. of like there's actually more in the open to public if we add the two of them together 45 versus 41 slight more uh to the open as opposed to behind a firewall and i would have said you know five years ago that would have been certainly flipped right. so i think we're seeing a trend toward that the recognition that, as you said that content is is a mm. a differentiating factor in a in a choice of um product Right. Although, I mean, this, the question was about primary, right? The, the primary information. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I mean, and I think through the comments were, well, some of it is behind the firewall and some isn't, which I think will probably remain the case. But I think you're right. I mean, what I've been seeing is more and more information is being open and people are seeing it as a, as a, a sales opportunity. So I think the trend is there, but there will always be some things people are leaving behind the firewall, I think. Uh, various reasons it certainly is a, there is proprietary information out there that you don't release so. mm -hmm. oh. uh, and so then um 
the last thing that we'll talk about, and then we're going to be open to um, various questions. So if you're if you've got some questions, you might start typing them in. Um, is this last one? We asked the question: Are you moving to the cloud? And a lot of people questioned us why we question why we asked that question. In fact, we had people who said, um, "Isn't this question akin to?" Um, are, are you using computers? <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but we did ask the question because I'd heard certainly from some of my clients of like, well, we were worried about security. And in fact, that's indeed the comments that we ended up with. And that's that, that small percentage of no, you know, said it's not secure enough. Um, we're, you know, we're worried about um, those types of things. So, um, Generally speaking, though, we see yeah everybody's planning on on moving to the cloud, but there is still some concern about um, things like security in in sure. there. Um, so. I'm amazed that it, this has been probably the biggest growth area for RWS in the last five years is our cloud operations and our commitment to security. I I, I am amazed now, Don. Customers a few years ago, I never thought would go cloud or going cloud in regulated industries, but there's there's ISO certifications, there's other aspects in security. I think as an org, as a as an industry, cloud has gotten much better. You look at Azure and AWS and 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 that security levels are getting to the point where IT folks are are requiring it, not recommending it, because um, on-premise systems, you know, it, it's hard for them to have that level of security that, you know, a larger, you know, their host or cloud organizations can support. Um, but then there are also the people that are involved within cloud operations. So there's all the certifications and, and all those, and all those things have really dramatically improved to me to the point where um, the, the conclusion I see is typically cloud deployments go quicker than on-premise anywhere from, I'd say, 20, 30% faster in cloud because as a vendor, we can control a lot more than on when we have to involve IT and so forth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. And that's been my observation also that companies that uh, a few years ago would not even consider cloud are now, that is the way they're going. <laughs> I'm pre-COVID now, so I think that's changed a lot of it also, but... Uh, I think uh, I think to Chip's point, the, the 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 quality has gotten much better, and people have gotten more comfortable with it. Uh, mm -hmm. That the the cloud can be secure. Mm -hmm. Although I think the international situation has had a counter effect, where people are always worried all the articles you see about. But I, I think overall, I think people are recognizing that you can be in a. A cloud can be a very secure environment and probably more secure than on-premise in most cases. Yeah. Often, Mark, we have to have the data in the country or the region, you know, so if you're in the UK, you have to have the, the cloud in the UK or, you know, or same for Europe. It, it's, and, and anyway, that, that's interesting in itself when you have users around the world. Yeah, we've had that. We have now a few, a few customers where the, the content has to be on a cloud server in 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 the country, right? And so it just sort of changes the dynamics a little bit, but yeah, that's been a trend we've been seeing. I think another thing that I wanted to just point out or comment on is that I I know that there are many people, uh, not necessarily people in this survey, although potentially some of them when we look at the definitions, but kind of equate digital transformation with cloud, right? And mm. that kind of even gets to the question, the comment of like, isn't this the same as asking, are you using a computer? Um, but Remember way back at the beginning of, of our talk, we talked about how many people said they were done with their digital transformation. They said it was like 7% some said they were done with their transformation. And here we've got 22% saying we're fully executed with our cloud, right? So clear thing if it's not the same thing, right? You know, cloud is not the only part of digital transformation. So I thought that was a you know good data point to just point, you know, point out it's not, it's not entirely equivalent. If you've gone to the cloud, that doesn't mean you've fully transformed your content. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I've got a couple of summary slides just to um, kind of talk a little bit about what we what we saw and then we'll be taking questions. So our conclusions from all of this is yeah, digital transformation is a concern and it is a focus. It's a, a high priority within the majority of the companies that we surveyed. And 
pretty much you're not alone. Pretty much everybody is in this process of I'm trying to plan and I'm trying to implement it. Very few have finished. And so, you know, you're going through the same struggles as, as many, uh, you know, your peers. And so, um, you know, you can, we certainly can have a lot of room to, to learn from each other and, you know, encourage that from the, you know, person who sponsors conferences of, hey, you know, share what you've done. Uh, people love to learn from you and that type of thing. Um, and then um, there's not a, a textbook approach, right? <laughs> people are all over the place. They're doing different things. They're using different tools. They're, diff they're delivering in different ways. There's not a this, you know, you know, when you've arrived kind of, of a thing that everybody will go, yeah, if, if you do, if you've done these five things or whatever that you have fully done it, there's not really a common approach, but, um, you know, they're, they're varying widely and, um, you know, it, it needs to be what it needs to be for your, your organization and your users, you know, to, if, if we go back to that definition of it's, if it's helping you write your content better and it's helping your users consume that content better, um, there's still a lot of, um, flexibility within that uh, definition to really choose a diff different approaches and different tools and different delivery mechanisms based on you know what is unique to your particular organization. So those are my uh, kind of general conclusions. Anything else you guys want to add about just a summary? No, I think that uh, that uh, says it all. I've gotten a lot of detail, but ultimately people are doing it. There are different requirements out of people have different ways of moving at different speeds. So <laughs> it, it depends, right? <laughs> but uh, but uh, certainly I, I think we're seeing a, 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 a movement towards people are recognizing the importance of, of digital transformation, whatever it means today. And I'm, I'm getting a lot of progress from what we've seen in prior surveys that we did. Okay. Yeah, and and honestly, Don, I want to say kudos to the, the the folks that did reply and the and the progress that's being made. And some of those those those, those indicators that we saw, you, you pointed out cloud and, and some other aspects, delivery channels. It, it it's all the investments that I think many organizations have made over the last ten years. I think what's different now is we're seeing the acceleration. You know what used to happen in in two or three years, we're now seeing happening sometimes in six, eight, nine months. So, so we're seeing a lot more compression, and and hopefully organizations that took advantage of early uh, digital strategies are able to to make that those leaps and changes very quickly now, and kind of agile approaches versus you know a couple of years in waterfall. Yep. Oh. And I think um, I speak for, for you guys as well, that we're ready to help you if you're in your tr transformation and you need any help, whether that's with tools or uh, conversion or just uh, you know some writing or consulting types of help. We're all here, we're ready to help. You can reach out to any of us on these email addresses on LinkedIn or anything like that. And with that, then we're ready to um, take a look at the questions. I know a few have been coming in. Kathy, you're going to, or Trish, I don't know which one of you is going to read questions to us. <laughs> I think I'll, I'll take them over for now. Um, one simple question was how many people participated in the survey? And you guys may not know, but it's 144. <laughs> a little lower than in previous years. I think people are a little surveyed out, but it still was a good representative audience that we heard from. So that was one question. Another um, was regards to the CCMS question that we asked, how people are storing. Um, this person said they were surprised that only 26% are using a CCMS, and he feels that that's a critical piece to uh, managing your content. So what do you think is preventing the other 74% from moving to a CCMS? It's interesting because Chip, didn't you, didn't you and uh, say, oh, that's a great number, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's funny. Yeah, it's all in the perception. Um, I, I think, you know, I look at trends and, and I've been at uh, RWS SDL now 14 years and Astoria before that. It, what the biggest trend I've seen in the last five years is adoption by groups outside of tech pubs, outside in, in CCMS and structured authoring. So we're seeing a lot of regulated organizations, insurance companies, uh, uh, auditing companies. So what does that mean? I think what we're seeing is, is that um, perhaps we're not getting the broader kind of industries that we may be having. You know, they're adopting CCMS. 
The second thing is, I think, Don, your, your group, your team works still with the organization that are working in unstructured content and the change management aspects. Uh, I'd love for you to reflect what's, what's happened in change management over the last several years. Um, I mean, you know, we definitely still have quite the influx of people who are still looking to move to structured authoring. So I do think that that number is going to continue to increase that that component content part of, of it versus the content management system, you know, is that the component part isn't important until you really are in structured authoring and you care about the individual components as much to be able to manage it to the individual pieces. So I think there's still that reflection of am I in structured authoring, but we saw that, you know, in, in one of the earlier slides that people are starting it definitely have structured authoring in um, in their strategies that there's at least working on it. So I think we'll see that number uh, continue to grow there. I think some of the challenges that people have that we hear are um, in particular with the documentation team that just largely the one that will worry about structured authoring more than anything, you know, than any of the other teams is just that there's something already in place. There's a content management system in place. There's mm that they're basically being told use what we've got why should we invest another you know few thousand hundred thousand dollars or whatever into a um in, into a, a, a ccms when we've already got some storage solution and so that ends up i think part of the reason that we see the number maybe being lower is that people at least try for a while to make their current system work right whether oh, that is files or folders or git or whatever and they just have to be better about their uh, maybe their management of their files um you know the manual aspect of it so that they don't move things you know content management system is going to keep your links intact even if you move your content around you know those types of things but they they just don't move them as much they're more uh you know restricted in in some of those types of things and try to make it work oftentimes we see that um, we help people who have then gone, well, yeah, that we did that for a while and now it doesn't work and we need to go to a, a, a component content management system. So, uh, you know, to answer the question of like what's holding it up, I would say there's definitely that, uh, I see that aspect of, well, try to make it work without, without one, you know. <laughs> and I know some organizations that have worked, you know, with uh, just a file system or, you know, um, mm. or maybe even Git for, for a long, long, long time at, before they ever went, you know what, we've just got hundreds of thousands of content assets and we really do need uh, a system that will do things more automated for us. Right. I think it's a number to watch because I think it's it's also, it's an endpoint. It's like, if you've got uh, people who are in other phases of not having it in place yet, are people who have been, are, are those people in, in a survey who said they're working on it? Mm -hmm. So I think that number will increase over time. I'm seeing mm. more and more the, the and, and at least in, in this space more and more of the of the conversion work we do is going into into data into s1000d and areas like that that require that will require a ccms so i, I think it's that that's a number just to keep watching i mean it's, it's and, higher yeah, than yeah. it was a few Good years point, ago Mark. it will be higher or as we go along as those implementations take place next year and the year after that number will go up uh, yeah, and I definitely agree with that. We are um, we are often contacted by people who um, know that they want to go to some kind of a system. Um, they want to, uh, you know, get some consulting advice. And uh, you know, honestly, the number of those projects that we have had has um, really actually exponentially increased in the last two years over um, previous years. So there are just a lot more people looking at. Um, at, you know, help, uh, moving to some kind of a component content management system, what should their requirements be, what, you know, the, 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 the specifics of moving to data as well and everything else. But, um, but still that, that, that whole thing of help us choose a tool, um, those types of projects have, have dramatically increased for us over the last few years. All right, what next question? Okay. The next one was, I think we, I already answered it, but it was early on when you were talking about, is your digital transformation ever done? And um, the person I think was typing the question as Mark was saying, no, it's never done. <laughs> 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 um, maybe uh, Chip and, and Don, you can comment on that as well. <laughs> maybe you already have, I mean, we've talked about it a little bit. 
I, I would say that's a great question. Um, I would say a big part of our, another big part of our business growth are new groups that are adding on to an existing CCMS. So they could bring in another business unit. And we have a customer in, in Missouri that does this and they have a new delivery portal and, and everyone, all their, all their um, apps want to get onto the delivery portal as, as a requirement, they must get their content into data, bring it into the CCMS. And so the interesting part I see about that is that um, their digital adoption is going to be predicated by being able to be supported by the CCMS. Yeah, and I guess I would say I, when it comes to content, there is no um, I'm done right. situation, right? It's that there's always there's always innovation. There's always ways to improve. There's always um, your users are changing. You know, I teach minimalism and I talk about the fact that, you know, minimalism is a one step thing either because your users are changing. And so we used to have uh, people who, you know, I mean, when I first started my career, um, my every single book I wrote, every single uh, uh, software documentation uh, book that I wrote had a chapter on how to use your mouse, right? You know, because it was new. Right, so here's what we mean by a single click and a double click and a right click and uh, oh, now we've we've introduced a, uh, a a a rollerball mouse and so now how do you use your rollerball? You know, all of those things were part of the software documentation because the user community didn't know how to use a mouse at first, right? Oh. But if you put that into your documentation today, people would laugh at you right you know and they kind of go this documentation isn't even for me because obviously you're writing to to somebody who knows nothing and I know more than that and so that that decision of at some point it evolved your, your to take that kind of content out right that was because our users changed so even with digital transformation same kind of principles if if digital transformation is giving the users the information they need at the time they need in the format they need you know all those types of things well those needs are going to change they, they constantly do and the expectations constantly choose changes as certain companies innovate and then everybody goes oh well, I wish you were more like this or something like that and so I don't see that the digital transformation process will ever end it's something that you should continually be reevaluating or are we you know not, not necessarily calling it digital transformation but it still goes back to are we giving our users what they need in the form they need when they need it yeah and Don, you finished my thought. Thank you. And, and I forgot, I was going to say that what happens, each new group you bring in, you learn more about, oh boy, we never thought about that. And sometimes you can reflect that into the larger group, or it might be unique for a business unit. So, you know, in this kind of phase adoption, you, you can live and you can learn about new things and constantly evolve to support it. Yep, absolutely. Mark, did you want to add anything more or you felt you already... No, I, th I think <laughs> I think answers were never we've never changed. I mean, we're ne we're never quite done because uh, all these things we've talked about. You you're adding new business units, you're changing your content, and technology is changing, and we don't know where what will be available a year from now, and two years from now, and five years from now, uh, especially in the world of artificial intelligence and that kind of automation. We don't know where how quickly that's going to move. Uh, and some things will move very quickly, some things will never be there. So it's going to be a constant, we're constantly going to be reevaluating, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. I do want to point out that in the chat, Marianne um, gave a link to where all the full graphic results of every survey question are, if you're really interested in, in um, percentages and some of those things that they've all, uh, DCL has published that out on their website, so you can see those numbers. And that's in the chat for everybody. Yeah, and also someone asked a question about the overall numbers for those eyesore graphs or slides that we had. Um, it just would have been too complicated to put that scale in. Uh, so they are also in the chat, those, those actual numbers for what we're currently uh, delivering our content, how we're currently delivering our content and what the source is. So that's it for the questions. And often when I say that, three or four more questions come in, but I don't know that that's gonna happen today. Um, I want to thank the panelists. This has been great fun, and uh, I appreciate you taking time. And thank any you. Thank you. last thank thoughts? You.
Oh, thank you. I always enjoy hearing uh, around surveys and thanks for the time. It is really nice graphics to, to the team for creating these visuals. Thank you. All right, everybody, if you have questions, uh, we will send out uh, the email addresses for everybody when we send out the link for the recordings and you'll have those, but uh, we'll see you on the next webinar. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Don. Bye, Mark. Yep. Good. Bye-bye.